Hello everyone, sorry for the delay in recent videos, I've been busy, first it was my girlfriend's birthday, then I had connection issues. But anyway, on to today's tutorial, which is a scalable gold farm, meaning you can make it get larger or, to an extent, smaller in any direction. So here on the left we have an example of a small one, not the smallest possible one though, and on the right we have an example of a large one, but also not the largest possible size. These are just two different sizes. So I've had these running for about 15 minutes. This has produced one gold nugget and one rotten flesh. Uh, by the way, these do all also produce rotten flesh, so your wolves will never go hungry again. And this larger one has produced four gold nuggets and two rotten flesh, and it's about to produce some more. So this works by drowning. Uh, in past updates, at least on console, pigmen wouldn't die by drowning. Oops. Wouldn't die by drowning or uh, fall damage. You can only uh, suffocate them, like inside a block. But now they die more ways than they used to, so it's much easier to make mob grinders for them. So I decided just to make this simple drowning one, because it takes up the least space. And he only dropped a rotten flesh. Oh well. So there you go. This is how the farm works. Now I'll show you how to build it. So to begin, we will need a chest. We will need hoppers. Um, we'll need black glass and water buckets. And we'll start with that, as well as we'll need some obsidian. And fire charge to make the portals, and then we'll also need some more stuff later, but we'll worry about that when we get there. So to start with, we'll build our intake chest, which is literally just put a chest on the ground. And now we need to decide how wide we want our gold farm to be. I'm going to make this one 7x7, seven seven, but you should uh, you don't have to make it exactly the same. You could you know make it 7x14 or whatever, but I, for your first one, it's best to do it just a cube shape. <coughs> so I'm going to do 7x7 seven seven here. So I'll do... And extend out three in each direction. Uh, actually, I'm going to fast forward through all these clocks. Basically, you're just making a two block wide bucket to fill with water, and it should actually only be too tall. I built a little too tall. I'm going to have to break off one of these top layers. So let's go down here, and now we'll connect hoppers to our chest. And you can connect them however you want, as long as they're all feeding to the same place. And then, next thing, we will fill this up with water, obviously, because we're going to need to drown people in here. So, uh, oops, I'll take off this top layer now. Might as well do that before I put the water in. Yeah, sorry, it should only be two blocks tall, not three. So, fill this up with water. Probably doesn't matter if it's flowing water or stagnant water, but I always use stagnant water. And now we're going to extend this little platform, basically, so it's seven blocks long. So currently that's four, five, six, seven. And it's already seven across, so this will make us have a seven by seven square. And you could fit another drowning chamber. Um, I actually will do that for the larger ones, you'll see later. But for this one, I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to put the thing to drown the pigmen, and I'm only going to have one of them. So put two things of, I put slabs here, but actually it doesn't matter if you use slabs or blocks. Uh, put blocks surrounding it though, and put trap doors on the bottom half of those blocks like this, so the pigmen can't get up and take a breath. And next we'll put our trapdoors down, and like I said, I was actually doing an old design, we don't need to use slabs there. Sorry, I just wasn't thinking about it. So we'll put that up here, just like this. So there should be one block higher than the uh, trapdoors, basically. Even though they don't look like it, they are actually one block higher. And even though it doesn't look like it is, you should put the uh, string directly on top of your trap doors. You can, I always connect it to the other string just to be safe. And then put your redstone down. Redstone is actually very simple, just a line on each side so that when you activate any of this string, you see this whole thing opens. Oop. Oops, got some flowing water. I'll need to fix that later. Anyway, that's the whole redstone. Um, now put a thing of quartz on the top. I'm lazy, so that's all I'm going to do. You should actually enclose it completely so you don't have baby zombie pigmen running out, because those are only one block tall. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to bother with that. So I'll fast forward through this while I fill in the rest of the ground to make it 7x7. Seven seven. And we will also make a wall that is three blocks taller than your floor level. So it should be three blocks higher than your floor level. Pretty self-explanatory. And you see, while, I'm record while I was recording this tutorial, I actually only made it two blocks tall. You see me testing it here to make sure this trap door doesn't open. I actually didn't think about this, it only opens when it's above the redstone, not above the tripwire hooks. So to be honest, I made this one too short. You should make it three blocks tall. See, this one's only two blocks tall? Anyway, after you make it three blocks tall instead of two blocks tall, we need to start building our portals. 
Each portal, well your ground layer portal at least, should be five blocks tall. The portal itself is only three blocks high because the zombie pigment only spawn on the bottom of the portal. You'll see what I mean later. So basically the whole goal of this is to fit as many portals as we can in as small of a space as possible while still having gaps between each portal for the zombie pigment to drop down into our mob grinder through. So first we'll build them all around the edges like a cube. Like I said, only three tall, and then they can be, you know, the maximum length. Oh, we got one spawning. So like that, you see that one there? It spawned on the bottom. So the more bottom portal blocks you have, the more likely you are to get the zombie pigment. So he'll go down there, and when we walk off the edge, uh, so let's light all these portals. And so that looks good, right? But we're not actually done. Because we can fit more portals on the inside. And I'm going to fast forward through that, because it's kind of boring. But before I start fast forwarding, I should mention, actually before you make these portals, you should lay these trap doors down. And they have to be open trap doors, because the zombie pigmen don't know that the door is open and they'll just walk right over it. So I always use wooden doors for this. If you really wanted to, you could probably figure a way to use iron. So uh, just have open portals at the edge, or open uh, trap doors at the edge of every portal. And now I'm going to fast forward while I build the rest of these portals. So we're back down here with the zombie pigman who spawned earlier, and you see if we push him into the wire, he drops down there. Now let's go outside. See, this is what I was talking about. See how that trap door shut? It was right above the redstone. I didn't think about that while building this. Anyway, let's close these just because I'm... So you see Mr. Pigman down here is drowning, and they will wander naturally into this drowning chamber, and then the stuff will collect. So now I'll show you how to build the bigger version, and it really works the same. So first we'll make our drowning chamber slash mob grinder, so that's going to be the exact same as the other one, 7x7. Seven seven. Um, connect a bunch of hoppers to a chest, basically, you know. But the difference here is, once we put all these hoppers down, we're going to connect another row of hoppers to make another mob grinder, drowning chamber, attached to the same chest. So that's simple enough, leave a one block gap, and then make another 7x2 thing of hoppers. So they all connect to the same chest. Sorry about that. Okay, so now these are all connected to the same place, and now I'll fast forward through this while I surround them in water. And notice there's a wall between the two, that's due to how trap doors work in this case. So now we're back here, we got our water chambers all ready, and we'll need to build the part that drops them in there using trap doors again. So that's pretty much the same, we're just going to put two right next to each other. And that will cause redstone interference, you'll see what I mean later. But in this case it's really not a bad thing to have one activate the other. You know, after all, it's just going to be dropping mobs, and that's what you want to do anyway. So I'll fast forward through that part here until we get to the actual red step. And remember to leave a comment and let me know what you guys want to see in future videos. Do you want more PvP technology? Do you want more auto farms? I'm running out. Uh, do you guys want more, you know, advanced redstone like the lock and key? Just let me know what you guys want to see for the future. So once you have your tripwire hooks set up, just like they were for the other mob grinder, you're going to put the redstone in a very similar way. And this is what I was talking about with redstone interference. So let's get this all set up. You see, if we step on this one, it opens half of that one. But that's really not a bad thing. It's not going to do anything bad. It's going to be very unlikely that it's going to, you know, give a pigment a breath that it wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So seal up the redstone just like we did before. And remember, unlike I did for the other one, make this one three blocks tall. Test out wooden trapdoors just like this to make sure your redstone signal doesn't do what it just did there. It shouldn't affect your trapdoors at all. So once you reach the correct height and enclose it all in glass like you want to have it, uh, the next thing we're going to do is build our portals. And the portals will be just like they were for the smaller version, but we're going to stack them on top of each other. So I'm going to fast forward through this first part of the portal building, and then I'll show you what I mean by stacking them. So let's light up these portals so they're ready to use. You'll notice I have all my wooden trapdoors just like the other one. Boom, and it, uh, you might fit more portal space if you fit these sideways. I didn't count how many you know portals per square inch. You know, putting them sideways rather than uh, forwards like I have them, if you know what I mean. Kind of hard to explain. So, uh, build another layer of portals on top here, just like this. The portal itself should only be three blocks tall, because that's the minimum height. And I explained that earlier, you want the maximum you know, sort of floor space for each portal. A weird term to use describing a nether portal. I'll break these so I don't accidentally end up in the nether. So, you might want to put your trap doors before you put your portals, once you know what size your whole portal room is going to be. So you're really just building the same exact thing with all the portals right on top of itself again. And you want to open the portals, of course, so they can fall down to lower levels. 
And there might actually be a, a height limit now. I didn't think about that since zombie pigmen die from fall damage. They didn't die from fall damage when I used to build these. So I guess technically there is a height limit. Um, you know, you could fix that with a water chamber at the bottom if you really wanted to build a giant gold farm. So I'm going to fast forward through this, but really there's no limit to how big you can make this. You can stretch it, you know, in either direction. You can make the drowning chambers larger, and you can add more as you stretch in either direction away from your chest. Uh, there's really no limit to how large you can make one of these. So that's about it for this tutorial. Please hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more tutorials by me, mostly redstone tutorials. And please leave a thumbs up if this video was enjoyable or otherwise helpful for you. Uh, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you never run out of gold again. Thank you.